25th. Yes, hi, uh, Jax, thanks for having me. And uh, two major events happened in 1971. First was President Nixon declared the war on drugs, which was a tragedy in and of itself. And the same year, the Libertarian Party was founded. And starting with the first Libertarian Party platform in 1972, this has been the Libertarian Party's issue. We have been opposed to the war on drugs this entire time, especially the war on marijuana. And so in, this, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, in the 00s, in the teens, and now in the 20s, in six different decades, the Libertarians have been steadfast in supporting uh, decriminalization of marijuana and uh, certainly been on the side of uh, Normal's efforts for all this time. Uh, basically, any, anyone else who, any of the other parties have just been playing catch up for the last few years, uh, chasing public opinion, because the public really has come around on this issue. It took a while, unfortunately. Uh, we were like in the wilderness back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s saying, um, you know, ending the war on drugs and um, ending marijuana prohibition. But we were there. I was there personally for the last 40 plus years. I've had an advocacy for this position. Um, and uh, I used to live in California back in 96. I was active in, in the medical the first medical marijuana initiative, which everyone was amazed that passed uh, in California that year. And it was just shocking to so many people, but it was a pioneer and so many places around the country have gone uh, with medical marijuana and certainly some places have gone with uh, recreational marijuana. And that's the libertarian position that marijuana should be removed from the federal schedule of controlled substances. Uh, it should not be listed as, uh, as something that's uh, controlled. It should be available for any adult to use for any reason they want. It shouldn't matter whether it's uh, medicinal, recreational, et cetera. It's a personal choice. Adults have the right to put any substance in their bodies that they want, uh, and the government shouldn't be telling them that they can't uh, do that. And uh, all these years of people being put in prison, federal prison for uh, drug offenses like caging people for a plant is just absolutely disgusting and disgraceful. And as some of the state legislators mentioned, uh, it impacts the uh, African American community, the Black community, and the Latino community even more than the white community because uh, uh, minorities, especially young men, are so often stopped by police and, and harassed and, and arrested for those kind of offenses. And that was the design of the war on drugs. President Nixon really wanted to go after uh, uh, black people and anti-war protesters, and he thought uh, uh, marijuana was the way to do it. So uh, anyone who's ever been convicted of mar a marijuana offense, a nonviolent uh, drug offense, should be uh, pardoned, released from prison, and whether they're still in jail or not, have their records expunged, and uh, liber libertarians would do that. Uh, tens of thousands of federal prisoners would be released right now if uh, this was passed. Obama pardoned some, Trump has pardoned some or, or commuted their sentences. That's just, it's just like a, a drop in the bucket there. 47% of all federal prisoners are in for uh, nonviolent drug offenses and 17% in, in the states, but 47% of federal prisoners, nonviolent drug offenses, absolutely terrible. And that's something that uh, I, as a member of Congress and other libertarians uh, would uh, fight against uh, uh, considerably. One other thing I've added to the mix is that I believe that we should abolish the Office of National Drug Control Policy, which is the drug czar's office. That's just a ridiculous uh, PR uh, office to try to whip up uh, opposition to, uh, or whip up support for the war on drugs. And there's just absolutely no need for that position. That should be uh, abolished completely, totally, and tomorrow afternoon. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Now, let me just mention real quickly in my race, uh, the Republican candidate who's the leading candidate is Pete Sessions, who used to be a Republican congressman from the Dallas area until he was defeated for re-election in 2018. He used to be chairman of the House Rules Committee, and he single-handedly, he's the gatekeeper, he was the gatekeeper in Congress, he single-handedly stopped marijuana reform from coming out of the House and going to the floor of Congress while he was Rules Committee chairman. He's just terrible on that issue. He's one of the worst of the worst uh, of the worst. Uh, besides being an establishment swamp monster, you might say, on so many issues. And he, uh, after being defeated in 2018, he went district shopping and found District 17, which includes the north part of Austin, uh, Wells Branch, Pflugerville, et cetera, then goes out to Bryan College Station, goes up to um, Waco, and, um, and then uh, about nine rural counties in between. So it's a really big district, very diverse district. Uh, I should say, and I'll, I'll uh, concede, the Democratic candidate Rick Kennedy claims to be uh, in favor 
of some of the same uh, views that I have about uh, nonviolent uh, or drug offenders and all. I hope that's the case. If he's elected, that, that would be the case that he would uh, really stick to that position. But it's really tough with the other parties. Even the Democrats are in control of the House right now. And they wanted to uh, uh, have marijuana reform, uh, remove marijuana from the list of controlled substances like I was advocating. And then they just don't vote on it. They say, oh, no, the uh, stakeholders, you know, like the police and the prosecutors don't want it. So they'll, they'll just follow whatever special interest groups like that uh, want. Uh, I am not beholden to any special interest groups or corrupt party leaders. And that's the case for all libertarians. I only concerned about individual rights, personal freedom, economic freedom, uh, upholding the Constitution, uh, and uh, certainly would never uh, support any kind of, uh, of uh, drug laws like that. And as I've said, I want to get rid of as many drug laws as I can. So again, thanks for having me and, and the other libertarians. And I just want to just add, I really applaud the, the four state legislators that came on uh, for their efforts in, at the Texas state capitol. Please keep up the good work uh, at the state level. Thanks.